Taylor, thank you. Earlier this morning, we sat down with Democratic Representative Jillian Gilchrist about the future of our state and what the new legislat uh, legislative session is underway right now. And now we want to hear from a Republican in the legislature, Jason Perillo, who represents the 113th District in Shelton. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just want to get right into it. I asked Jillian earlier, and I want to get your perspective as well. So a big talker we have been talking about this week when it comes to uh, the new governor and the new administration is that groceries tax proposal. We know tax is a big deal here in Connecticut. The grocery tax is going nowhere. Um, there's not support on you know, the Republican side hearing. There's not support on the Democratic side, which is unusual. Um, what's concerning, though, is it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. you know, we heard during the campaign about creativity and creating jobs and bringing business. And the first things we've heard so far, you know, one month and change into this session, is taxes on groceries, statewide property tax on cars, statewide property tax on residences and businesses. So the first solution we came up with was more taxes. The first solution we heard from the governor's office is more taxes. That's a problem. That's a red flag. At least it is to me. For you, I mean, A, does that worry you? And B, how would you guys prefer for us to go when it comes to the tax problem in the state? Well, it worries me because we saw what happens to the economy when you raise taxes. We saw that under Governor Malloy. The three largest tax increases in the state of Connecticut's history, and what did we see? People are leaving, jobs are leaving, businesses are saying, I'm done with Connecticut. So when we see that three times in eight years, and the first solution from the current administration is raising taxes, you know, when, when you make the same mistake over and over, that should be a red flag that, gee, maybe we're doing something wrong. And we've really gotten off on the wrong foot here um, in hearing from the governor's office and from legislative Democrats that their solution is taxes, taxes, and more taxes. And for you, as you went into this new legislative session, I mean, every new session is somewhat of a clean slate, right? It, it is. You do it is. I mean, I've, I've been here for a number of years, and, and every mm -hmm. two years you get, a, you get a new sense of the lay of the land, and you always have new players, and we have a new administration, which mm -hmm. is a big change. So, yeah, so things do sort of start over, and you hit the reset button. So for you, as you went in, what are your top priorities? What are some bills that maybe you might want to start focusing on? I know you mentioned something about insurance. Talk to us about that. Yeah, I mean, I think every legislator has local bills that, that, that matter to their districts. I've got a number of those. Um, in term, you know, more globally, uh, I think that what we've seen with the opioid uh, epidemic is a failure by the insurance companies, and I don't mean to pick on them, mm -hmm. uh, to really pay for and cover uh, the rehab services that are needed to take somebody from addiction to true recovery. Um, I, I, I talk to providers who struggle with insurance coverage, struggle getting um, days covered for their residents, and uh, that's something that needs to change. I've proposed a bill that would create um, mandatory coverage requirements. And it doesn't really sound like a Republican would talk about mandatory coverage. But in this case, with people dying every day, I think we need to really look at the way insurance covers and pays for uh, rehabilitative care. And what's been the response with that so far? Uh, actually, quite a bit of interest. Um, you know, when something is, is an important topic, like the opioid ep epidemic, you, you get interest from legislators um, and, and others from throughout the state. And that's what we've seen. And for you and your party, how do you make sure that even with a new administration that you are still working together for, their, um, uh, for the better benefit of the state as a whole and even uh, for your constituents in Shelton? Yeah, well, most of what I've done over the years has been in concert with working with Democrats. You know, compromise always, uh, for the most part, generates better solutions. Uh, it's easy to be very, very partisan, and sometimes that happens. It is what it is. But... Um, I find that as a Republican minority, mm -hmm. um, we win when we have better ideas. And we, we saw that last year when a Republican uh, budget was passed by the legislature, uh, which hadn't been done um, in decades and decades as a minority party. So when you have the right ideas, you can make things happen. And just like we did last year and we have done over the years, we're going to continue to do that and fo focus on that this year. All right. One month down. A year and 11 months to go. That's right. Um, when you look up at the end of this session here, what are some things that you want to go, okay, we've accomplished this? Well, obviously, we need a balanced budget. You know, that's first and foremost. We're going to hear from the governor in a few weeks about what his proposals are on that. You know, we've gotten a little taste of what that might look like. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, that what we see um, in a few weeks will be a little bit different mm -hmm. and it'll be a little more focused on helping families, not hurting families. Um, but that's step one. And then uh, from there, you identify smaller, more finite priorities and you know, try to take them across the finish line at the beginning of June.
Representative, thank you so much for joining thank us you. this morning. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hope you had a smooth drive from Shelton this Didn't morning. Mean, yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And happy Super Bowl Sunday to you. And to you. All right. It is 840 right now, and now to some consumer alerts this morning. Have you come across a pothole or a broken streetlight in your community and wonder, who do I call to get it fixed?